Assalamu alaikum, hope you're all doing well. Insha'Allah, today we're going to talk about another companion of the Prophet and through this story there are so many lessons for us in our day-to-day -day life, insha'Allah. So let's jump right into it. Today we're going to be talking about At-Tufayl bin Amr al-Dawus anhu. So who was this man? This man was from the tribe of Adaus in the land of Yemen and he was considered a very respectable man. He was a leader in the tribe and he was known as a poet, was eloquent in his speech and he was very well respected and followed amongst the Arabs uh, in his tribe. Now one day Tufayl was visiting Mecca and at this time the Prophet ﷺ was a messenger and he was spreading the message of Islam and Quraysh really dreaded and feared that Tufayl might accept the message of Islam if he meets the Prophet ﷺ. and they didn't want that to happen because they knew Tufayl was a leader, a well-respected man. If he were to accept Islam many people would follow him so they really did not want that to happen. So when Tufayl was visiting Mecca Quraysh leaders, they spoke to Tufayl and they kept convincing him, hey, there is this man here, he is just spewing all kinds of things and everything he's saying is false and he is creating a lot of commotion in the land. If you see him, you know, don't engage with him, don't have discussions with him, don't talk to this man, stay away from this man who is called Muhammad. So they were really trying so hard to get Tufayl to not have discussion or conversation or engage with the Prophet So they said, don't ever talk to him, don't listen to him, don't have discussions with this man. So Tufayl recounts the story and says, to the point, they kept convincing him to the point that he was so convinced and said, of course, I will not talk to him, I will not speak to him, I will not have discussions with him, to the point that he even stuffed his ears with cloth or cotton when he went to visit the Kaaba so that he wouldn't hear the Prophet And then when he went to the Kaaba, he found the Prophet there praying. And in spite of him having his ears blocked, he still was able to hear something of what the Prophet was reciting. And then he told himself, why am I here with cotton or cloth in my ears? I'm a poet, I'm a writer, I know good speech, and I'm a smart man. So if I hear his speech, I can be able to tell what is good and what is bad. If it's good, I'll listen to it if it's bad, I'll just disregard it, it's not a big deal. So he decided to remove what he had in his ears. And then the Prophet ﷺ finished praying and made his way home. And this man of Tufayl decided to follow the Prophet ﷺ home. And so he went to the Prophet ﷺ's home and then told him, I'm Tufayl, your people said this and this and this about you to the point that I stuffed my ears to not listen to you, yet I still heard some words from you and I'm interested, tell me your message. And the Prophet ﷺ then presented the message to him and recited some verses of Qur'an to him and Tufayl in that moment said that he had never heard anything as beautiful as those words. And there he embraced Islam, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah, even with all the planning and plotting that Quraysh did to not get this man to listen to the Prophet ﷺ, even with this man stuffing his ears, the message of Islam still reached him and he accepted it then and there. And he was so confident in the message of Islam that when he went back to his tribe, he wanted to preach to them, share them the message. His father, his wife, his, his immediate family accepted the message but his people refused to accept the message and he tried and tried and tried and it was a difficult journey of him trying and his people were just refusing to listen to him. Now, Tufayl was very sad that his people were not listening to him, were not accepting the message and he just became sadder and sadder and then just got frustrated with his people and angry. So Tufayl went back to the Prophet ﷺ to complain about his people. And he told the Prophet ﷺ that sin has overcome his people and that they are refusing to accept the message. And then he asked the Prophet ﷺ to make dua against his people. Now what do you think the Prophet ﷺ's response was? The Prophet was sent as a mercy to mankind. So instead, he made dua and said, Oh Allah, guide the people of Daus. Oh Allah, guide the people of Daus. He prayed for them, not against them. And subhanAllah, in that is a message, an example of what the Prophet ﷺ, he was merciful to the people, he was patient with the people. And he turned to Tufayl and told him, Go back to your people, call them to Islam 
and be lenient with them subhanallah this is a reminder for all of us how we talk to each other the prophet sallallahu message was a message of peace and mercy and kindness and leniency with patience and softness and that was his advice to Tufayl, who tried and tried and tried he basically told him don't lose hope and be lenient with, the, with your people be soft with them be gentle with them don't be harsh with them don't lose hope in them don't give up on them and the Tufayl returned and for years and years he worked hard to convince his people to preach the message of Islam and to get his people to accept the message and alhamdulillah he eventually got so many people to accept Islam when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina Tufayl came to the Prophet ﷺ with it's, uh, it is said about 70 or 80 families who had accepted Islam and who were coming now to meet the Prophet and another beautiful thing is that we talked about Abu Hurairah a few videos ago and Abu Hurairah was actually from the tribe of Dos and Abu Hurairah accepted the message of Islam from Tufayl himself so subhanallah look at the ripple effect that this man had if you want to know a little bit more about Abu Hurairah a few videos ago was about Abu Hurairah he is someone who has narrated over 5,000 hadiths from the Prophet Wasallam. So because of him, we have so many narrations that we are able to look at from the Prophet Wasallam. So imagine the ripple effect that this man Tufayl had. Abu Huraira became Muslim at his hands. Other people became Muslim at his hands. Several families. And then the ripple effect that that had, those other people that became Muslim and the others and the others. SubhanAllah, from this one man and it's a reminder to us as well that we never know the ripple effect that we might have just by having a positive impact on one person subhanallah we never know the ripple effect that that could create so not to lose hope and to be patient with others and to be kind and lenient the way the prophet sallallahu wasallam was not to be quick to judge others and give up hope in them and think that they are a lost cause but to be kind and lenient with other people that we see never underestimate the impact that you might have on somebody else through kindness, softness, leniency, inshallah. And never judge anyone and look down on anybody because you never know what that person could become. And subhanAllah, that was the way the Prophet ﷺ was with his people. He always had hope in his people because you never know what someone could later become. Maybe right now they're bad and committing all kinds of things and so on, but don't look down on that person because you never know what they could become and then become very close to Allah. So that's just a reminder from the story and from the different stories of companions that we've been looking at that don't judge people for where they are now. Always have hope for people, always talk kindly to them talk softly to them, talk gently to them and don't be harsh and rude and mean and attack someone or think that someone is not good enough and there's no hope in that person. So I hope that's just a reminder for all of us inshallah in how we treat each other. And that's it uh, about Tufail, just a quick insight into who he was and the impact that he had and the impact that kindness and leniency has. And that's it. Assalamu alaikum.